I'm live. Do not, do not say anything bad. I am live, by the way. Do not. <laughs> we're officially. We're officially. We are on air. <laughs> uh. Slightly. What is this? What is this? I had changed it up. Yeah, no, I, I just. I started to stream and then changed it. I did. <laughs> Real. Hell yeah. This is what? Oops. Now, now it's now it's time to get. Yeah. Now, now it's time to uh, find some music. Incarnate, yeah, love incarnate. No, it's fine. Oh, I got it. <laughs> I need to turn on my own headphones. Do I speak? Hey, Aya. Can you open up the stream and see if the audio is good? I love having uh, off cameras. <laughs> <laughs> My tech team. <laughs> that sounds good. Thank you. Should we, should we start now? <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> you know what? What the fuck did you change your name to? Bro. Mira. Got it. Murray. Copyright distinct. A one shot.
<laughs> god damn it, Will. I just read chat. Oh my god, fu Oh wait, that's you fuckers. <laughs> it's still five viewers. Yeah, baby. We're at 41 followers, too. We're so close. Yeah, it's all fucked up. Don't worry about it. You guys didn't see the notes, right? Good. <laughs> 10. 23, 74. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> we love the emote spam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's overstimulation to follow. <laughs> Hell yeah. I am I am ready to start when everybody else is. <laughs> everybody got their drinks, everybody got their shit. Hell yeah. It's an eating stream. Alright. Everybody good? Everybody ready to start? I need to turn up Luke. Because he is quiet. Shut up. You. <laughs> Everybody wakes up in the bottom of a tap in this damp, damp basement. You. As you awake, this music does not fucking fit. <laughs> I got an ad. <laughs> that good now? As you awaken in the bottom of this damp, barren cellar, cellar it is. As you look at the map, it's, it's over here. You just see... You see the walls lined with kegs, all beatered and battened. This, you smell just absolute rot as you awaken. Cast, you are... Cast... Knock, you're not awake yet. Cast, cast my dear boy, my dear, dear Warforged. You are the first to wake up and... As you don't have any olfactory senses or anything of that sort, you just, you see this dark, dark, damp thing as you hear in the other room something rustling around and everybody else is too awake in Mira. You feel a, a burning sensation upon your forearm as you awake. You are... You have what appears to be a tattoo, a, a tattoo you never had before of a worm on your, of a weird Eldritch kind of worm on your forearm. Are you not going to question the random people that you've woken us beside? <laughs> you...
Cass is the first to awake to notice scuttling in the room over. Uh, yes. Uh, Mira, because the second you awake, it, it instantly stops and it goes eerily quiet. Like, the quiet to where it's too quiet. You you know something should... It should not be the silent. Everybody else is to awaken. And would you guys like to give a brief description of your characters? Since Cass is the first to awaken, they will go first. You have nothing. Yeah, you are in rags. Uh, Mira would know what you are. Yes. Mira would recognize this. What would be a war machine within the within the continent Alright, next is Mira, as they were awoken with the burning sensation on their forearm. Oh, I should be more specific. You, as you're awakening and you feel that burning, you see it getting, like, inscribed in. But not in the sense of, like, it's appearing. It's, like, it's writhing up onto your, like, like it, as if a worm was actually writhing into your arm. But it's just, but it's just a... It's just what you would assume is ink or some other permanent, like, scarring. Uh, next is Diablo to awaken. Yes, for you, Diablo, you would have remembered walking out of a tavern after being like, fuck this, to your last party, and then awakening here. Sort of, kind of. Then, Nock is too awake. And as you awaken and kind of glance around at each other, kind of very puzzled at um, what is going on and who you guys are, you hear... Actually, let me... Ch What's everybody's passive uh, perception? Uh. 
cast, you would know you would hear the sound of dripping and something like not not scuttling, but you would hear something climbing with it upon the ceiling as as you see this what looks like it was a human, what was a person falls down from the ceiling blocking the stairwell at the at the far end of a uh, the so you guys are along like this or can you see that yes As, uh, as you, as you fill this room with light, partially blinding your seeing compatriots as their eyes adjust, you hear this vile, vile screech, and see this. What you saw was a what looked like a person. Their arms are placed with these weird tendrils, and their head completely split open and only just a giant brain like sitting there as it screeches and charges at you. Everybody roll initiative. Actually... Knock is going to go first, actually. Oh, they go gray. Oops. That's fine. All right. So, Knock, what would you like to do as this creature charges at you? It is a weird tendril beast with blood dripping from its what looks like a beak. There's a like a slight beak under where a chin would be. It's about the size of an average like human, so about like five ten. Five ten six foot. All right, roll me to hit. That hits. As you connect with your fist, it it was as you get closer and when you connect your fist, you notice it was seemed to have previously been fought with as it has various slash marks on it and that punch was the final do to it. <laughs> as it keels over letting out a more violent hiss and as you do have a handle of liquor in your inventory sure roll me a con save <laughs> you're fine yeah. As you do that, it bursts into these abyssal flames, these black, black flames, and it shrivels into ash. A t tiny, tiny little pile of ash.
Uh, roll me a religion check. You would you would notice it's something occult. It's definitely not of any standard deviation of any religion you know within the regions. Yeah, it's all Hala. Roll me a religion check. From the various books and scriptures you have read, you would note it. You wouldn't know the exact deity's name. I know it's a really high roll, but I'm keeping the mystery. Because, <laughs> but you do know that there has been sightings of a new cult and more occult activities at in uh certain regions of the world. Considering that this is a, from Mira, what you would know about these is that they are as cast as a Warforged or a Zenith Angel as you would know them. Uh, you would know it as a war machine of, if it's, if it's in an area or within a region, there is something bad going on or there is some sort of war going on that, you sh that is not uh, known to the public. And as you, as you pray, I want, ooh, where's this, hold on, I'm, I'm looking at the, like, skills thing so I can roll, have the right one. Uh, bork. Dogs are barking. I want, I want you cast to roll a religion check, and then, then I want you, Mira, to roll a, ooh, what should I have you roll? Where is it? I'm getting... I'm looking. I want you to roll a wisdom. Wisdom save. Yes. Uh, as, as they pray and kind of like pray at the thing, nothing really happens, but you do feel a slight singeing as it like it, as it kind of move it you see the worm like kind of thrash a little bit but then stay still And as, as you guys are talking amongst yourselves, uh, you notice a flash of light from the floorboards above you, like as if something like almost exploded uh, on the floor above. And then you also notice that the door that the creature came out of was fully ajar. 
there's a room. There's a room, a secondary room off to the side and before the stairs, and then there's a stairs up to the main, what you would assume main floor. Oh. So then there's there's a room off to the side, and then there's stairs up to the main floor. Uh, you notice very. You do notice a tape, smash table, off in the corner. A strength truck. Yeah. You you just pull it, yeah. You pull it clean off. You pull it clean off, and you now have a table leg. Just put in a, a club. Yeah. I thought a club was one d four. Either way, it's you ha now have a improvised weapon. All right, strength check. You have a tough time getting a grip, but you manage to break it off, but it's a little bit splintered. So you don't think it would hold up as good. So the table is off in this corner if you are looking at I can, oh wait, I forgot to stream the fucking map. <laughs> Oops. Let me. Fuck it. I'm going to send you guys the fucking. <laughs> the fuck... Yeah. I just didn't have tokens, so. We've we'd run it live. <coughs> it's fine. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Tell me when you guys are in. All right, so that blue streak right there is the table that you just broke the legs off of that was smashed. Then there's a room off right there. Well, right here. On the creature. Uh, with your knowledge, you would know this as a... Fuck, what did I name it? You would know this as it's what a thrall of this cult is. Well, as like it's the lowest of the low of the hierarchy. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, there is an open room that you guys have not gone into. <laughs> As you go into the open room, you see things, just various items scattered across the floor. And you do notice a small backpack in the corner, but it does seem pretty uh, beat up. Um, as you search the backpack, you do notice a small folding dagger. It's just straight, straight handle, and it's you just pull it to open it up, like a like a normal folding knife. But then, yeah. And what's y'all's passive perception again? 16 is cast in the room. Okay. 
since Diablo was the first to enter the room, you would notice a longsword underneath, a very, really battered longsword underneath uh, one of some of the scattered items. All right. Uh, knock, you would have. So add, go to your inventory and then add item, then just type in longsword. Or I can add it for you if you like. Do you guys want to continue searching the room? Roll me. Roll me investigation as you guys search. Uh, Diablo, you would notice a, a couple of scattered coins, about about five gold and uh, about ten silver. And then, hold on, let me look at the rest of your rolls. I just had them up. Uh, Cast, you would notice various intact books amongst the otherwise blood stain and uh, what you would assume to be blood of the creature, as it is a black ichor. Yes, that's what you found. Um, one is a general history of uh, the, the region. You will know that you now have learned that you found yourself in Grotebrad. And that more specifically, you have also found another book of the local fauna, which is various just birds, deer, and uh, more specifically, hold on, let me pull up a note because I forgot. I actually made a note of this. You also would, while reading the book, notice some uh, some cryptology, like some little cryptids that are actually real, as in like they've been f cited by multiple people and attested that yes, those things are real. Of of a creature that works at night in the woods. And that is advised not to rest in the woods at night, as people have been found snatched from tree, snatched up like they have gone missing, and then later found what seemed to be just dumped from the sky. Yes. Yes. All right. Do you guys now head upstairs? All right. As you go upstairs, you notice signs of obviously a fight, various claw marks and various uh, wet splotches upon like carpets, torn carpets. And you're currently in right here. So, and that's just from the small crack, like the, the door is splintered, like it is, like has some, what looks like axe marks through it, but it's not, you don't, you don't know if it's an axe or not that caused it. Yeah, it just, it's a chopped door. It's a very, very damaged door. So, yep, you can pretty much see through it into the small hallway that there is and you could tell that this is a tavern. Was.
Everybody except Cast would notice a, a strong smell of a burnt flesh that's and also a kind of acidic smell. So as you venture just scanning through room by room, you see various just there is a corpse laid across one of the ta there's a long table in the one of the dining rooms where various people drink, you know, gather and you notice a severed in com cleanly severed in half uh man with a various like corrosive and necrotic like rotting upon his face uh like do, yeah horizontal it's it's this guy <laughs> as as you look through the windows it is slightly dark out it's more dusk at the moment. <laughs> like as if it was uh, used in a sacrifice or something like that. Yeah, roll religion. Uh, it just looks like he was not sacrificed, but just had gotten caught in the fight. As if, uh, actually, roll me investigation as well. All right. Uh, you know he would, it's not a sacrifice, but a fight. You don't know exactly if it was ambushed or just planned, anything. Just, just an altercation had happened. So, do you guys continue walking through the tavern? Okay. Did any of you guys pick up the backpack itself downstairs? All right. <laughs> yeah, you you saw you know you did notice the backpack as well after it had been uh, looted. Uh, I want Mira and Diablo to roll me perception checks. Uh, you guys luckily don't notice anything, but, and, but you do know that you are safe for now. Yeah. So do you guys continue into like the kitchen area back back of house? As you, as you do, it's kind of one giant thing. But as you do so, uh you notice one corpse of the same kind of creature very very burnt. Uh if you'd want go ahead check it. But um uh Romy investigation you would you would notice that this is definitely like some sort of fire magic as since you are a, a sorcerer so that is upon the corpse of the uh, creature and then with the other corpse you notice it kind of lashed and also completely completely scorched like just charred so, 
you do notice a kind of bigger backpack that's not as beat, beat up or torn up uh, resting against one of the walls. As which one of you? All right. Do, do does Mira want to contest looking at the backpack? Fair, considering that Diablo is gigantic. Uh, as you reach and like scuttle through, the, you just notice it's somebody's personal belongings. No gold or anything among them. Just a journal. A journal of... As you read... You want to read the journal? You notice it is the journal of a... Of a woman that finds herself more... Just her day-to-day -day life and then suddenly it one day it changes tone completely to uh ver talking about various creatures suddenly appearing uh people disappearing at night um strange murmuring in the back of their in the back of heads in town and uh strange figures working around the uh lands There is cu a couple dates that like lead up to it, like months, but then once it starts kind of going to shit, uh, the dates kind of stop as they all the thoughts all kind of like merge together as it seems like frantically scribbled down as kind of a way to uh, assess and like cope with the disappearances. And then. Uh, you do notice a small dagger as well. Another small dagger. Stacks on stacks. Alright, you now have the backpack. Yeah, you just see various like small items like hair a hairbrush, the did you keep the journal or did you also just dump that out? Uh you notice Diablo stashed the journal. Um, and then... Can everybody... Cast would notice... Like, since they are kind of magically attuned. And same with Diablo. You would feel like this strange magical aura in the next room. Like this this sense of like a spell has recently be ca been casted as it does leave a... To, to people that do cast magic, it does leave a uh, kind of sense. You kind of feel like, okay, something did get... Like, you, yeah. Do you venture into the next room? Um, it would be magic you can, if you have can cast similar magic. Basically, if it's in your same spell list, you can sense that it was there. Diablo would be able to sense it strongly. You would be able to sense it very faintly. Like, if it's in the same spell list, you would be able to discern, like, okay, a spell was definitely casted. But if it's not, you'd just be like, uh, I think magic was... Yeah, you just know that there is magic. But um, you venture into the next room and you see the outline of a person on the floor, like scorched into the ground completely. And just a very clean bedroom with, yeah, a nuclear shadow. A very cleanly scorched silhouette in the ground. Um, a backpack, like almost as if uh, a sorcerer's like kind of bag that was cut. Cass would notice it because they're passive, because they have a 16 passive. But you you notice it kind of like stashed underneath the bed. As you you notice the bag underneath the ground, 
the bed, you grab it and you notice like various, not any magical scrolls, but like books upon magic, um, as if somebody was still learning it or just refreshing their mind upon it. Yeah, very like very, very beginner magic. Um, nope, nothing else besides like, besides a robe and some, there, there's a scattered clothing throughout the. Uh, you did, can, do you guys want to search the room more? Roll perception checks. Okay. You would, Diablo, you would notice nothing that hasn't been noticed already. Uh, Mira, you would notice a small journal among the books in the backpack. Uh, you would figure out that this t this is the owner of the tavern's backpack named and the owner's name is Nefalia. And it is just hold on, let me pull up her thing. She was a magic caster. She opened up this bar to get away from the uh, religious zealots within the region as the main capital let me get the name of the cap. I have way too many fucking notes. <laughs> this... This is what happens when uh, you write a campaign for over a year. As you read various uh, ill tellings of uh, the capital of the region, Isengrau. As there is a religious zealot that has taken control of... Uh, Chance for John. And it also describes that there is a nearby town. Like, it has various notes of uh, customers that come by, regulars from the close by town of Faceman, and the militiamen that take a fancy to uh, staying at this tavern to rest their, their weary bones. And as, as you are talking, you hear from the front, the door gets smashed in and various uh, voices speaking, speaking common of just, I saw something in here, uh, searched it, searched the basement, uh, various things of that nature. Roll stealth. <laughs> Roll stealth. Yeah, I was going to give you disadvantage anyways because you are a big clunky robot trying to hide under a bed. Uh, you managed, Cast, you managed to slip underneath the bed perfectly fine. Um, Mira, yeah, you're like next to the door frame as... Hold on, let me pull up their stat. <laughs> and Diablo, did you roll as well? Uh, as, hold on, as they walk in, uh, they notice both, uh, Mira and Diablo kind of just pressed against the walls of the door, 
and they instantly raise their spears like straight to your necks as uh as they are like who are you they're just questioning you of like who are you where did you come from uh have you seen one of those things one of those followers uh they're very very on edge yeah they're one's a human the other's a uh tiefling Uh, there's two in the room and you hear three more shuffling around just in the various like you hear two downstairs There's one other just searching the other rooms I know my I know my map of the tavern didn't show but there was like bedrooms I mean, you're hidden under the bed. Mira and Diablo would know that you're underneath the bed. I'm assuming Nock is drunk. And Nock is just talking up the two downstairs. And they're just... You can hear Chummy talk downstairs through the floorboards. Oh, yeah. Each, each room had at least uh, two windows. Like, and it shows just various forest and a, a path. Like a very discerned path out front. Let me pull the, the tavern back up. Um, is there a DC for that? What would I, what do I got? Like, ooh. Okay. Is there a DC for them to like know it's something or is there Okay. Like, like outside the window. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you see the two that are currently holding you and Diablo. Oh, wait, I'll, I'll continue after that. Uh, Vince or Mira is trying to distract by making a scuttling noise outside the window in this area, in this room. The two guards that are holding Diablo and Mira by spear point, they're, they're more like relaxed now, but they're still like, who are the, like, are they bandits? Are they, cause they're, cause they're within the book. Uh, journal that Mira had investigated they would have also seen notes of uh, bandits coming in as well and kind of this this tavern being a uh, safe place for outcasts hence the name the outcast tavern but um as that as you cast that thaumaturgy and making that scuttling noise uh, you see the one that one guard that was in the dining hall rush through and like kind of peek outside the window uh holding a short sword and a sh small buckler shield uh two in this room where you guys are 
and one in this room at the window. proficient in wisdom at all. <laughs> Three. Um, so does this affect multiple targets or just one? Okay. Luke, are you here still? Okay, making sure. Mikey, you back? Nope. Uh, the one... Diablo, yeah, you would notice that uh, Cass kind of did something with his hands and there's a slight glow amongst his uh, entire body as the one holding Mira uh, looks over and notices cast underneath the, this giant war machine underneath the bed and just decides to leave as um and as they leave they kind of uh mira you would have line of sight of this but you notice like them whisper to uh the other uh guard at the window that we should we should go we we need to leave and so two two of the five guards are now leaving and heading outside the path outside you hear the front door still kind of open but you hear footsteps leave uh yes there's still one on you but like they're they're just like they're now not raising their spear at you at all they're more relaxed they're just now like so where have you came from what what who are you who what are you? This is this is the human one that has is now talking to you. Not the uh not the tiefling one. Yeah, you only have the clothes that were on your back when you left. And I want you to roll a persuasion check. He, he just nods and he goes... All right, there has been stranger things happening. I, I believe you. What? And he's going to. You said you got a 19 on your stealth, right? No, uh, I mean cast. Yeah. He's he's kind of looking around the room because he like he feels like something's off, considering his friend just hadn't left out of nowhere. And had taken the other one. They're, they're now completely calm. Their Diablo just told them like his version of uh, what has happened so far. No. But um, currently they're just talking. They're just like, okay, uh. They're, we're a part of the uh, the local militia that kind of protects the area as the the as the local church has decided to abandon our little side of a little side of the area of our, of our little state, I guess you could call it.
All right. And what does Mira want to do? As the other ones had left now, and they're, you see, you obviously hear and see Diablo talking uh, to this guy, and you, you're hearing the same shit. Do you, okay, do you sit on the bed or lean on the wall? Because if you sit on the bed... <laughs> I, uh, I, the guard notices Mira kind of walk over to the bed, hesitate for a second, and then walk and lean against the wall. Not anymore. <laughs> uh, the, the guard walks up and kind of like pokes you with his foot and goes, I can see you. <laughs> I, I just imagine you like lift yourself up on from the floor and like the bed kind of just tips off you as you stand up yeah like coming out of a blanket that like you could cocoon yourselves in yeah and uh as the guard kind of i want you to roll an intimidation check um he's he's kind of more timid he's just like haven't seen one of you in this area. Um, yes, you would know that other uh, constructs of your making were are kind of just war machines, and yeah, bad, bad, bad or good, they're just general omens of things, to, big changes to come to the area. Uh, okay. All right. Um. Well, you just... We happen to notice some noise and some talking coming from this tavern after... Uh, while we were on our patrol of the, of the outside of town. And as... As you say, creature, the two other guards come up. Uh, w one of the guards has is lugging the creature, while the other one is keeping their spear like trained on it, just in case it isn't like dead. So, and you notice, you notice them lug it towards the uh, the fireplace and toss it in, and start making a fire to burn it. No, but it can never be too safe. O only in death does it seem that praying really does anything to them, but... Just, just be lucky that you didn't come across one of the feral ones. It's uh, well, more feral. That's more more changed by by a fool. It's definitely faster and definitely stronger. It's sometimes it it tries to uh, leech into your brain to try to guess your guess mo best move, but uh, considering any dings on your forehead, considering you don't have one. Uh, I think you'd be fine. <laughs> how, how would Cass feel about this random man just 
taking his like the tip of his not the tip but like the flat end of his spear and like kind of tapping you on the forehead with it poor kid oh Ooh. it does that okay I'm I'm making sure that my audio stays fine. I'm actively adjusting it right now. <laughs> of course, um, just follow us. We're just finishing our patrol. Uh, we could bring you back to uh. He does burp. That is canon. He does burp, as. <laughs> Uh, we can take you back to our town, uh, Facement. It's not far. It's a s smaller city. And... And uh, as the guards are kind of chatting amongst themselves and chatting amongst Nock, having Nock having shared some of the liquor that they found underneath the uh, in the basement, uh, Nock and them have seemed to be grown chummy at least. And uh, yeah, I I kind of just said that you stayed in the basement as you found alcohol, and as these militiamen kind of came in to check out the building. Uh, you kind of just chatted them up and started drinking with them. And No, you guys have left. You are traveling to the city of Faceman. I want everybody... Yeah, Face... Faceman. Faceman. It changed for y'all, right? I, I don't know how to work Roll20. <laughs> or... So, you traveled from here down to, you passed by dilapidated buildings and, uh, not to anything scorched, but just more run down, rotting, as it is a, a decent marshland. Uh, and as you approach Faceman, I, well, first of all, I want everybody to roll me. Did they roll? What I have you roll? Was it nature or was it? Perception. I want you to roll nature. Yeah. And who had and and Cass, you you had the book right with the local fauna. Uh, you roll with advantage. Yeah, you roll with advantage. So, Mira, you would see various uh. You would hear various things of scuttling around, not like the same scuttling you would have, you heard when the uh, creature attacked, but just uh, various birds and things flying around. But you do notice one thing, as if dropped from the sky, and very much looks as if it has been eaten, uh, hanging from a tree. But not dropped from the sky as in like far, far up, but just it's you see this body hanging from a tree. F A C M O N D. Sadly. Yeah, Mira kind of points out the 
the various things going on and then points out the body hanging from the tree as a... You notice... Oh, it did. That's why it's so quiet. Okay, yeah, that's... Okay, thank you. <laughs> For the stream. That's, that's why I kind of felt off. Why, why the fuck won't it let me add it to the fucking activity? Shit. I'm trying to add Sinister Forest. That <laughs> oh, don't even get me started on the... And you can see him just hold his forehead as he's clearly having a, a visible headache. <laughs> he's just like, oh... Don't even... There... Those fucking... Those fucking zealots... Don't even bother to send any other paladins out here to protect the locals. All they care about is the big cities and their fucking... Their trade routes. He just keeps ranting and just cursing them out. <laughs> you... Yeah. And... <laughs> uh, you would have heard he doesn't say the church's name at all <laughs> during his rant but um I want you to roll religion checks as to kind of like as to guess at, yeah guess at like um you all what the fuck is this music the ad um Hold on, I'm fixing my music. Not what I wanted to do. Why did it pop out? There we are. But um, you you would you can take a guess that it's the Church of the Blinding Sun, as they they do take communion. But cast you would be like that doesn't seem right. And Mira, you would whatever whatever your own personal feelings of a this. Generally, like decent church, like they're decently uh, overall good people. They're for wealth and prosperity of uh, others. It, you're, yeah, yours kind of casted you out after uh, doing whatever they did. We'll get on that later. <laughs> yeah, the the per that's the part that stands out to you. Yeah, you're not surprised as considering you are a war machine <laughs> and you've seen uh, what some of the more segmented in their own because, you know, pe people are people and when a leader of any sort of level gets any sort of power, you've seen what it can do. This is sponsored by the Anarchy Party. Yeah, that that would be the. <laughs> but um, yeah, you would you can take a hot hot shot that it's uh the Church of the Blinding Sun. <laughs> the um, the tiefling that. Seems to be more of the uh, head of this of this squad of people that have patrolling. Um, he he looks at you and then notices the like emblem, and he's just like, "Oh, yes, you would." Yeah. <laughs> he just can He just kind of like side eyes you, but he's like he's not like distrusting. He's just like, "Yeah."
Well, then we're all on the same page here, luckily. But um, as as that as you guys now enter the town of Faceman, you notice decent decently kept up buildings, just a basic uh basic village. As there's various people just walking around. There's a let me switch to the thing. You notice a market in the center, a large, decent patch of field for uh, for grazing and various animals. But um, you don't notice any animals out at the moment. Uh, then there's also a very large building of that you would assume is the town masters or whatever you may call them, mayor, town hall. I want everybody to roll me a perception check real quick. Oh, yeah. No, it's all good. You guys... Uh, Nock, you notice this person kind of, um, raise their hood and, like, dust themselves off, and you see, like, their hands, like, slightly covered in soot. As, as they, like, appear out of, uh, of, out of an alley, but, like, you could, you could have sworn that that alley doesn't really lead anywhere. There's no doors or anything in that alley. At least that's what Nock notices. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You you know as you're walking around, what do you want to do? Do you want to head to the town master? Do you want to head to the the market that's in the center with the small amount of gold that you do have? Um, there is a giant notice board, but there's there's a giant notice board outside the town. Yeah. Uh, as you go up to the notice board, you notice a only two, only two uh, things kind of nailed up there. As the town kind of seems more quiet and shut in, as a uh, whatever has been happening has been happening. But you find one from you find one thing from Alderman Ansel, which is a traveling merchant, and it it says looking for guards. Must be well equipped. Will pay five gold per day of travel to walk. <laughs> as as you look at the other uh, notice, it says. Looking for somebody, like it's kind of like rushed, poor handwriting. As actually, roll who's reading mainly? Who's the main reader right now? Um, roll insight. Handwriting can tell you a lot about a person, 
Uh, you can tell that this is definitely a younger person as their handwriting isn't the best. Um, and you notice small, like, soot marks as if it might be a blacksmith. And as you continue to read, it does inherit. It does say that it's a blacksmith. It's blacksmith in training, looking for somebody to test their weapons. Like, t they're looking for somebody to test their freshly made, like, weapons as they are very new to uh, blacksmithing. And it says... Um, like you, you want to just like scrape it off with your fingernail or something. Um, roll. What would I have you roll for that? Uh, Will, Will or Vince? What would I? What would I ro have? Uh, to, sc to scrape the tiniest amount. Yeah, roll me sleight of hand. Roll me sleight of hand at disadvantage because it is like a fingerprint amount. <laughs> All right. Y yeah, you, you. It just digs underneath your fingernails. You have like your 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 index finger is now dirty. Like your index fingernail is now dirty. One second. I will be back in a second. All right, what's up? Okay. Okay. Uh, sick. Yeah. Okay. Uh, waiting for Cass to get back, I'm assuming. Okay. Uh, do you guys want to just, like, take a quick cursory glance around town like at so to the blacksmith you kind of you look around for where the blacksmith would be as this seems more like a since you aren't locals you wouldn't really know and you see a little pillar of smoke out on the uh, edge of town where you assume where the blacksmith would be So, <laughs> fucking goobers. And the name on the flyer for it was Earl. I I need to stop using random name generators because I cannot pronounce this last one. It's just Earl. It's just Vince takes ten psychic damage right now. As you hear, as you hear, Miro say, "Erm." Okay, you you see Miro convulse for a second, then fall to the ground. <laughs> oh, 
Yeah. No. Whenever that happens, and if it does knock you, I'm just going to have it render you unconscious. I'm not going to have it kill you. <laughs> I'm not that mean. Yeah, they're just... You just kind of see them, like, hold their head for a second, and then just... You, c you could wake them up, and it would just restore them to their normal... Normal health. You could just also use the help action <laughs> and just be like, wake up. <laughs> so, so you, so you do, as you cast this and they wake up, they're just like, huh. uh. this giant, what you would, what you know as a giant death bot has their finger pressed against your forehead and you're laying in their lap. <laughs> as, as you... Yeah, no, you're good. <laughs> If you want to know, you can roll Arcana. <laughs> That's up to you. Okay. Eleven. Uh... Yeah, they definitely got smited by something. You don't know what deity or what caused it, but they definitely got smited. <laughs> yeah. Yes, this is... Yes, there is a deity for saying herb. It's the deity of knowledge. <laughs> yeah. But, like, it's... Diablo would know that this is like their deity and uh that that is a f that they thought a forbidden word <laughs> and that even if they were to think it or say it like they would also have gotten smitten <laughs> yes it hates hates it hates nerds that correct others. It doesn't mind like sages, uh, researchers, anything like that. Like, it just hates people that are like, um, actually, yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you're being actually informative, they're just like. <laughs> but uh, as you as you make it your way to the blacksmith, uh, you see this. Young man working outside, very, very frustrated with himself as uh, he's banging away on this piece of metal at... I want you guys to roll a perception. Who's the first to walk up? Okay. I want you to roll a perception as you, uh, as you walk up. As you walk up, you uh, you're like, what? And you you manage to discern that this is supposed to be a scimitar. But it's, it looks more like a sickle. Like it's a it's scimitar handle, straight blade, and then it just goes, and but like not in the sickle way. It kind of also teeters off to like one side, so it's super bent. And he's trying. It looks like he's trying to bend it back into place. He looks very, uh, very novice at this. Um, Diablo or Mira as, as, uh, you see Cass kind of puzzledly look. Uh, Diablo, you would notice the same thing of like, 
What the fuck? Is that a... As as you speak, the the kid. This is like a seventeen year old. He jumps, and um, like he he is startled by uh you speaking, in this, I'm guessing a booming tone, and he's like, "Look, man, my my I I I I just." And he's like very frustrated. He's he can't like get a word out. He's like, as you say. Diablo, do you like pat this kid on the shoulder or do anything like that when you say you get it? Uh, the second you do that, he hugs you and starts crying. Um, he, he does not notice you at all. He is caught up sobbing as <laughs> Diablo do roll me insight uh, you can definitely tell that this kid has gone through tragedy recently um, but yeah you can see various semi okay looking uh short swords, daggers, just sitting about, and um, like just some are slightly bent. They, they do seem usable, at least those ones. But um, he, he manages to uh, <laughs> he, <laughs> as as uh, as Diablo is comforting him and notices the what seems to be tragedy that this kid has gone through recently, he uh, starts to compose himself and he goes, "I'm sorry, I. That's not very uh manly of me. Uh. Uh, and then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but but um, he's just like, um, sorry. I just my father has gone missing recently and uh." I I've inherited his forge and I'm trying to pick up where he's left off with a uh, this shipment of a uh, weapons that he's supposed to fulfill. And he and you notice you notice on the far like wall next to the forge a uh, large parchment with uh, various items on it like various short swords, uh, long so it's three short swords, two long swords, uh, four daggers and um, two scimitars as like a list of like what needs to be made and um um you could i want you to roll intimidation because <laughs> we're <laughs> um as as you touch his shoulder he freezes as since you are metal and since tungsten isn't exactly the it does hold a lot of heat but it's also it your hand is surprisingly warm and it but it's like the warm uncomfortable warm metal feel as it's just slightly too hot and it's he just turns around and he's he is quaking as he looks up at you as he is Five six. This is a short, short kid. War machine just. <laughs> he just he starts just frantically nodding, just like <laughs> he he frantically starts nodding, just like yeah yeah yes 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 uh. Uh, 
Uh, d- um, I don't know. My dad's been gone for a week or two now. Uh, he had gone to the forest to go hunting, but um, that was near dusk one night, and the most people shouldn't go in the forest that night. Um, if you integrate the tool within your body, like I, cause I know that's something you can do, right? Um, it would take no time at all since it would be like using a fucking hammer forge. <laughs> so you could, you could help him bang out these, uh, swords and things, but, um, and if you're, if you're sneaky enough as as you're being compelled, you feel this compulsion of like, maybe I can make myself something, or I can I can equip my f- my friends. Um, it would take you an extra like hour. It would take grand total. It'll take you like three hours to do. Rules as written. On yes, you you're allowed to. I I'm just gonna have it be like interchangeable tool bits for you. Like that's that's like how you can integrate it. Yeah. Yeah, you can you can change it out. It's it would it doesn't add any time to it. It's just a part of the whole thing. Um No, but besides like inside obviously, but that's the that's the kid's house. You can you can see his mother at the window kind of like peeking through. Uh, yeah. And, and since you have double, you would be six. You make some very, very basic standard weapons, but yeah. Yeah, it takes you. Well, since you did roll a little bit lower, uh, it take it took you like another hour longer, as four hours. So, yeah, it's it's pretty dark out. You most everybody's inside. There's there is a ta- like a what seems to be like a makeshift tavern, as considering what has happened with the outcast tavern. Uh, give me charisma. Just general, flat charisma. Yeah, general charisma. Yeah, he's, it's just like, I, I've heard legends of your, would people be the right term? I, I wouldn't know, truly. But, um, but, uh, your, whatever, uh, being war machines or just general mindless automatons, but you're quite kind. Thank you. This this kid, tr- oh while 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 uh, smithing and stuff, he talks more about how uh, 
his father would go hunting frequently, but never at night. But they had the town has been running lower on food due to uh, the local, the new cult that has popped up, and you have now learned the name of it. It is the cult of of Hollow. Who was the one that rolled the 20 in nature? Who was the one that has the book on the stuff? With your combined knowledge, if you do, if the two of you do talk, do the two of you talk? I'm assuming so, between the four hours. Uh, but yeah. And whenever the topic of the father going into the woods at night, Cass, you would remember some sort of cryptid type creature living in the woods at night and Mira, you would with that knowledge of uh, what that cr creature does it's known as the bag man <laughs> as, as you learn more of the, the bag man of the woods you, would, you can assume that it's that corpse in the tree earlier was definitely it was definitely his father <laughs> Also, Cass, you do manage to make some extra weapons. Uh, you get to... Ch yes. Yeah. It has to be simple. Simple weapon. Mira now has a longsword. He, he currently has a long sword. He's a monk. No, what do you, didn't you pick up a uh, long sword earlier? Yeah. He current he he was currently equipped with a long sword. You can pick another weapon if you want another weapon. Yeah, because it would be a, a katana I would have be more complicated to make, and with the limited iron, you're you're making iron weapons currently, not. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, that's all out. Yeah, great sword's fine. That I would say that's what took you the extra hours. Yeah. And as you guys Yes, you can. So you guys are gather around this forge. It's it's keeping you warm in this it as it is what you would assume like late fall, early winter. And I'm not gonna have you guys roll for any sort of like cold thing. So, but you do notice a heightened sense of guards, like, wandering the area as it does grow later in the night. No, he trusts you. He trusts you now.
uh, as you guys do this, you are talking to them. You see, uh, hold on, where's where's thing? You see the what Nock would have saw earlier of the woman with a they look like priestess kind of clothing. She very blatantly looks like a cleric. Uh, but you notice. You notice her uh, wandering with some of the guards currently. Nope. She's, she just seems like some sort of healer. She just seems like the healer type. They do belong to a church. I do know that. A god, a deity. I forgot the name of the... I'm using just the basic list of deities from D&D. &D. Which, whichever the one's the healer. Yeah. But... So, you guys do notice this woman wandering around. You could go and talk to her. Or, you want to honk shoe? Uh, Asmira and Diablo, I'm and Nock, I'm assuming all you go rest in the makeshift, like, kind of bunkhouse that they, uh, have set up for travelers. As this does seem more of, like, a refuge town. Yeah. Um, Mira, as you rest and dream, you catch glimpses of these long, dark tunnels beneath. Well, you don't know where, but it's long, dark tunnels in the underground. And... And you... S Hold on, where's this thing? You get glimpses of this worm just weaving through those tunnels, having a dark red glow amongst it. W O R M. And as you shout, you in your dream, you feel this rumbling beneath you and just you then wake up you're you startle awake at uh Cass would notice this as you kind of awaken it is now dawn it's still really dark and it's now raining uh what's your passive insight Uh, you would notice she's kind of shifty as if she's trying to hide something. And if you want, roll me, roll me your actual insight. Yeah. Um, you do notice her kind of just being shifty in general. And you do notice soot on her fingertips. So, so on her fingertips and on her boots. But, and I want you to also roll Arcana. Mm hmm. She has recently teleported. Not Misty, not Misty Step, but like full, just open a portal, teleported. So, and you guys want to go out into the woods and kind of wander the area, look for things.
I will absolutely allow, allow retconning if it makes it make more sense. Purely so that's easier for all of us to remember what the fuck is going on. Uh, let me s let me look at the bagman's thing real quick, and I'll send you. I'll send you it. It's you and now Mira. You, basically, you Mira and Diablo would know now. I'm going to send this in front of. Of Lois. Yeah, that says I was talking quieter, not into my mic. <laughs> At night. At night, the if you're looking at the main map, it would be the the sightings are more around this southern area. Uh, just from the murmurs you've heard around town and. And also that yes, there is like a snippet of like it likes dense woods and there's a set of dense woods south of the town. And as you're walking out of town, you pass by a patrol that seems agitated as uh, one of them seems to be have been robbed like it was only a patrol of two, as it is early in the morning and kind of relaxed. Uh, they seem to be very distraught as one of them seems to have been missing now his current armor, which is like just some weather plating, like weather plates, hard weather plates on his chest. Damn bandits up in Silk Nate. Somebody should really ch go and clear them out. I've... Uh, you hear the mentioning of Silkmate Cave. Silkmate. M-A-T-E-S. Silkmates. Of Silkmates Cave. As that's where they were patrolling. Or at least that's where you can assume like they patrolled up to. Uh, you guys have yet to go and talk to the mayor. <laughs> um, as you guys are about to leave town, you hear a, a bell, and people kind of gather outside the uh, main town area or main town how like look yeah town square. There's a town square. Everybody's gathered there. You just hear shouting and then. Uh, dispersing, unless you get. That's the general gist of what you get. Okay. But you do get a lead of. So far, you have a lead on Silkmate, the Bagman, and also these new creatures of, known as. You will now know him as the Horde of or of Ol's Horde, of Hollow's Horde. <laughs> that is a that is a tongue twister. Um, nobody truly knows where they come from, but they do know that it's usually locals converted into some strange beast by some manner of magic. Ugh, manner. Uh, 
Okay. So, I'm guessing leave it off at here. I'm down. Yeah, I, c I can do I can do the speech real quick. It's you see this bigger fellow, uh, a stout dwarf. He's with a very very tall hat to try to make himself seem bigger. Uh, definitely not of any wealth, but of just general status. Uh, he's spouting off as you go closer and you hear him go. And do not worry, as as our militiamen and our militia women have kept us safe. Those bandits and those ho the cursed horde, they will not breach this town. And you hear people cheering on and then also murmurs as... Like, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, as uh, as you guys approach and you see, and he sees you as he's standing atop like a bunch of boxes, he goes, and um, he, he dead silent, and everybody like turns and looks at you and goes. And then looks back at the mayor. Collectively turns and then looks back at the mayor. The mayor goes, "And we have invited this mechanical one to protect us. The See, the capital has not forgotten our town." Uh. <laughs> this mechanical one. An angel has come to save us. He, he's uh, he's now trying to play it off, but like, the town's not believing him. You got, yeah. The t the the town's people start to disperse and murmur as you can hear like, oh, we're, uh, I need to leave. And you you notice the uh, scraggly merchant that uh, that post. You notice the scraggly merchant run up to you and goes, "Did you see my? Did you see my uh my posting? I, I you 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 fellows, you seem equipped enough." Um, he, he kind of looks over your gear and everything. He's just like, I, it's four people with four weapons." Um, <laughs> he seems desperate. He is. He is. He <laughs> is not us. Ah, uh, that, that, that. He's like trying to like. Since since you aren't as equipped as I prefer, um, I can do two. S I can do two and a half s uh, gold per day, if that's okay. It's half the rates. I'm sorry, but it's it's. I'm desperate. I I need to get out of this town. I and uh, I can provide you with tents as we travel. Um, the t the town, the city where I want to go walk. It's quite quite far, but um. Uh, roll me persuasion. Uh, I can yeah three three three's perfect three's perfect um, I do have to stop and drop off a uh, shipment for though it's, and it's a it's with some dodgy clientele that's not the militia isn't a big fan of. Uh, I c I could use the protection. Yes, I can. I can throw in a bonus of a s something. I can. I can definitely scavenge something through my goods that I'm. So. Y Persuasion. 
Roll intimidation? Hell yeah, you can. Uh, um, Forge, for, you aren't that well equipped. Yes, you are. You are one of the angels, and yes, that is stri quite striking. But with this group, they're a bit more. They're not as pertaining to the legends. I we will most definitely have to travel to a. I don't know if you have heard of it. I don't know if you're local here or not. Um, the Silkmate Caves. Uh, old old mining caves that have been shut down due to uh, giant spiders, but they're they're cleared out from last I've heard. I I believe so at least. So, at that. Uh, at that. You are now talking to this man. He is giving you the rundown of you guys might have to stop by Silkmate Cave in case he needs to pick up more goods, in quotes. And um, we can leave it there for now. That will end the first episode of The Hunt of, of Ol. I hope that was, I hope you guys enjoyed. Try my best. Uh, okay, sick. I am now stopping.